peace and blessings to you all. I want to welcome you to another spiritual vitamin service on this day of April the 15th, 2023. You have another chance at life. You should be grateful to God. You should have an attitude of gratitude because he woke you up this morning. You should be giving God a hallelujah praise every chance you get. When you're on your way to the gym and you get to the gym door, give God a hallelujah praise for the use of your limbs that you can work out. When you get up in the morning, the first thing you should do is say hallelujah. Thank you, God, for blessing me to wake up. When you're at the workplace, thank God for your job. Thank God for your family. Even though, even though you may be in, in conflict with your family, thank God that you have a family. Thank God for providing you with food, clothing, and shelter. Thank God for love, for the love that he has for you. That is the message that I am going to give you today. The power of love. That is the spiritual vitamin that I am giving you today. The power of love. That is because love is a universal language and it has a direct bearing on all of us. So very quickly, all eyes closed and all heads bowed. Let me pray for you really quick. Father God, I just give thanks to you for all matters of life and all things. On behalf of all of those that are watching and that will watch the pre-recorded message, I ask that you will lift up your triune spirit upon each person, Father God, that is watching. I ask you in the name of Jesus Christ that you will remove all bitterness and wrath and anger and hatred from within them, Father God, and bestow love inside of their heart, mind, body, and soul. Give them your agape love. Put it in their hearts, Father God, that they may project it to others, Father God, because energy is transferable. Father God, I ask you that the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight and be of edification for all of those who listen. This I ask you in the name of Yahshua, Jesus Christ, great and mighty name. Amen, amen, and amen. God bless you all. God bless you all. Once again, I just want to say God bless you all because I want you to receive your blessings. God wants you to receive your blessings. So all you got to do is give him his glory. You glorify God, he will glorify you. Once again, love is a universal language and it has a direct bearing on us all. It literally, it literally transcends people of all walks of life because it is a universal language that we can all relate to. I propose that love is God's greatest attribute. I propose that because he gave his one and only begotten son that whoever should believe in him should not perish but have eternal life, everlasting life. Check this out. Love is supposed to produce joy, peace, happiness, alignment, respect, calmness, and less stress upon you. Love is so powerful. That is why I'm bringing this message to you today, the power of love, because it is powerful. And the first spiritual vitamin that I want to give you today is 1 Peter 4, 8. It says, above all, show sincere love to each other, because love brings about forgiveness of many sins. If you have love in your heart, it is easy to forgive. If you don't have love in your heart, it is very hard to forgive. And you will more than likely walk around for years not forgiving a person because you have not the love of God in you. You are quenching the Holy Spirit and he is not overflowing in you. You have brought the Holy Spirit power down to about a fourth of a level when it could be up to uh, a third or, or overflowing or to the top if not overflowing. Because the Holy Spirit can be quenched. And the Bible says, do not quench the Holy Spirit. Why are you quenching the Holy Spirit? Why are you harboring hate? Love covers a multitude of sins. Beloved, let us love one another, for love is of God. And everyone who loves is born of God and knows God. So how could you say you know God and you love God if you do not have love for one another? Love is so powerful that it covers a multitude of sins. Now, we have all sinned and we all have all fell short of the glory of God. It happens, but love wins in the battle of good and evil. Love will always win. Love conquers all. 
So in all that you do, project love, act with love, and you will attract love to you. You will attack love, uh, attract love to you, and, and you will live a gracious and a faithful life. Love is so powerful that it, it can make you do some foolish things also. You got to be very careful who you fall in love with, ladies and men. You got to be very careful with whom you fall in love with because there are people who will take advantage of your love. There are people who will take advantage of your kindness. There, will, there are people who will take advantage of your love and kindness and all of the love that you show them, they will take it for a weakness. But love is strong. Love is so powerful. It's the power of love. Love covers a multitude of sins. Love conquers all. Love will eradicate hate. It will eradicate racism. Love is so powerful, though, that it will make you stay in a toxic relationship for years. People can't get out of relationships that are toxic, that are hurting them because they're in love and love has a hold on them. I propose that love can blind you. Love can weaken you. If you do not gravitate to the right type of love, you're loving a power that is less than love. You're loving a power that is not of God. Because if it was of God, then it would not weaken you. It would strengthen you. If it was of God, it will uplift you. It will encourage you. It will make you feel good. Love doesn't hurt. Love is is, is kind and it's patient. You, you will put up with things that you normally wouldn't put up with from somebody that you, 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 you don't love, uh, but you're in an intimate relationship and you're going through some things and you put up with some of the worst things, with some of the craziest things, with some of the most vile things. You put up with it from a person because of love. Love is powerful. Be careful who you love. Be careful how you love. Be careful of the relationships that you allow yourself to be trapped in. Although love is patient and love is kind, you still have to be willing to make adjustments even in relationships. you got to make adjustments one for another. And you have to use wisdom. You have to know when you are in a relationship if it is good for you or if it is bad for you. Is this toxic or is it edifying? Is it lifting you up or is it bringing you down? If you love one another, you will discipline yourself to not yell at one another, to not try to control one another, to not disrespect one another, to to be nurturing to one another, to comfort one another, to encourage one another, and to protect one another. Love is not selfish. It's not just about you and your wants or your needs, but in being one together. Love is about putting the needs of each other, of your own self, above your own. Love is about putting the needs of your life partner first. Love is not selfish. And if you do these things, then you are practicing true love and you will sustain your relationship. But it takes both of you to understand and to do this together and to show love to your children and to hug them and to tell them that you love them. Love is not always what you say, but what you do. Your children need love. They need to be told, they need a hug. It's not always what you say, but what you do. I'm going to repeat that again. Hug your children. Show them that you love them. Be there for them. Take time and sacrifice time for the things that they are interested in doing. Don't always make them do what you want them to do. Listen to your child because you can tap into this source of creativity, of, of what God has brought them on this earth to do. You may be raising a prophet, but because you're telling them, I want you to go to school to be a doctor, you're not hearing them, you're not seeing what, what their natural gift is. 
Allow the love of God to lead you the course of the way throughout your life. These kids are walking around 11 and 12 years old and killing one another. They're shooting one another. The uh, grown-ups are even doing it. But it starts with the children. The children are our future. They need love. They need to, 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 to grow up with the mindset and the energy of love. And it starts at home and then abroad. These kids that are out here killing one another is because they have no love in their heart for another human being. They're able to walk around and shoot somebody in the head and walk around like nothing has happened. They need love. Love is so powerful. The power of love will eradicate that hatred that they're having, that animosity, that anger that they have inside their hearts. It will take it away. 1 Corinthians 13, 13, it says, so now abides faith, hope, and love. These three, but the greatest of these is love. 1 Corinthians 13, 13, it's the second spiritual vitamin. It says, so now abides faith, hope, and love. These three, but the greatest of these is love. The greatest of these is love. The power of love will stop wars. It, it will bring nations together. It will end racism. It will reduce stress. It will produce loving generations of people for years to come. Love. Love. We must love one another. We must learn to love one another, folks. Energy is transferable. If you have love in your heart and you go into a room and you're filled with love, everybody is going to feel that love. They're going to say, they're going to instantly look at you. They're going to see that glow, that light upon your face, that light, that glow of love that it only can come from God. And they're going to be attracted to you. They're going to listen to you when you open your mouth and you speak words of encouragement to you and you speak uh, 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 and teach the gospel. They're going to listen to you because they know that you're doing it out of love. If you're doing it out of anything else, it is less than God. First Corinthians, this is the third spiritual vitamin. First Corinthians 13, 4, 6 says, love is patient and love is kind. Love doesn't envy or boast. It's not arrogant or rude. It does not insist on its own way. It is not irritable or resentful. It does not rejoice at wrongdoing, but rejoices with the truth. It rejoices with the truth. Love is God's greatest attribute. And then the last spiritual vitamin that I have for you today is Colossians 3.14. It says, and above all these, put on love, which binds everything together in perfect Harmony. I want to repeat that. Colossians 3, 14. It says, and above all these, put on love, which binds everything together in perfect harmony. Love. Let us love one another. For the love of God that dwells in you, allow it to surface. Allow it to come up. Give yourself a chance. Give yourself a chance at love. And remember, folks, anything less than joy, peace, happiness, harmony, and alignment in your relationship, in your family, at your workplace, at the church, that is not love. Because love brings it all together. Colossians 3.14, he says, and above all these, put on love. When you got love, when you got love in the church, we'll bind, it will bind everything together in perfect harmony. When you got love at home, it will bind everything together in perfect harmony. When you have love at the workplace, it will bind everything together in perfect harmony. No matter where you're at, no matter what you're doing, when love is involved, it will bind everything together in perfect harmony. That's the message for today, the power of love. I love you all. 
God loves you all. And I just want you to have a great, wonderful week. Enjoy, be safe, and practice love. Practice love. Practice the discipline of loving one another. Let hate be gone. Put it away, folks. Put it away in anger. Put away uh, uh, unforgiveness and be kind to one another. God bless you. I love you. And I will see you next week.